Hey, what's up guys? Money with Yumi here, where I talk about anything and everything related to money and how to grow your wealth. And wow, 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 the markets are going crazy. They're on a wild roller coaster right? right? And Chinese stocks are getting obliterated. Right? I'm going to share with you what I'm doing in this market, some of the moves I've made, and what I'm thinking of doing. So Chinese stocks saw the biggest slump since 2008. The Nasdaq Golden Dragon China Index which follows the 98 biggest US listed Chinese stocks has fallen by almost 15%. Wow, 15% in the last two trading sessions. The index has now plummeted by more than 45% since hitting a record high in February. Okay, let's look at Gautu, an after school tuition company, right? Will you look at that, guys? A 52 week high of $149.05, and today it's $2.46. And this is the reason why a lot of investors around the world are hesitant to buy into Chinese stocks, right? Gaotu is being investigated for committing some serious fraud. This is the reason why I find it hard sometimes too to trust Chinese numbers. But it's tempting to buy Gaotu at this price. But I also know it's a gamble, right? Pure speculation. The main reason for the recent sell-off in the market is caused by China's Evergrande Group, which is the second largest property developer in China, having developed projects in over 170 cities in China, and it was once considered the most valuable real estate company in the world. And right now, they are having rumors of bankruptcy, and they are facing default on billions and billions of dollars. It's already being compared to Lehman Brothers, if, if you remember, they caused the financial crisis back in 2008. And if you're thinking that every company is affected, that's not true. Apple hit all-time highs, Facebook as well, Dow, S&P 500, and Nasdaq are near their all-time highs. Inflation is at rocket high, 5.4% in July and 5.3% in August. And I'm telling you, people are starting to feel the pinch and not spending as much, especially when there's no more stimulus money coming. And to be quite honest, I think this number is really low compared to the actual numbers because like I mentioned in my previous video about inflation, grocery prices are up like 30 to 40% and so is gas, petrol prices, and electricity. And right now, rent is gonna go up as well. And don't forget, some people didn't need the stimulus money, so they put the money into the stock market and now they are taking it out because maybe they need the money either to cash out on the profits, use the money to travel, or to cover their expenses. So many people are asking what you should do when there is a sell-off in the market, right? Many people are afraid of a bear market. A lot of retail investors freak out and sell their stocks when the market falls, and I'm the opposite, right? I love it when there's a bear market, right? When the markets crash last much for the first time in a long time. So many people were afraid of buying and the next thing they knew, they missed the opportunity. This is another buying opportunity if you missed out last year um, and you've never been in the stock market and you want to give it a try, this is the time to start. So this is why having the right mentality is important. Think about it this way. If your favorite toilet paper, uh, snacks, uh, shoes, or makeup is on discount, do you buy more? Hell, if my potato chips are on discount, you can bet that I'm gonna buy more and stock up, like, like for real. And it is also one of the reasons why it's so important to do your research on a company. If the numbers made sense to you at that time and you bought it at what you thought was like fair value, then if it goes down, it's only logical for you to buy more, right? It doesn't make sense for you to sell at all. Unless you're saying like the management change and their vision for the company doesn't align with yours. But, but that's not what we're talking about here. If I can get a chance to lower my cost basis, I'm all for it, right? The harder thing to do is when you have to increase your cost basis. I've definitely hesitated before and missed out on several deals that end up skyrocketing, but I have done that, right? Especially for Facebook. Facebook is like my index fund and I've been buying it for a few years now. Whenever it dips, I buy. But also don't go all in into a stock, even if it dips like five to 10%. Right? I buy into it slowly, like 100 shares if it dips 10%, 200 shares if it dips 20%. But as you know, the stock market is unpredictable. Sometimes when I just started building my position in the stock, the stock goes up so fast so quickly and then I'm stuck because I don't want to increase my cost basis. I liked my cost basis. And Palantir is a good example of that, right? I bought it under 20 and it went above $20 way too quickly 
and right now I'm still in a limbo. So what am I doing in this market? I'm constantly trying to find deals. A deal is a deal, right? There's always money to be made in a bear market or a bull market. Some, some deals are easier to find in certain markets and some deals are harder to find, but there are always going to be deals out there. That's something you have to understand. I'm hoping the stock market drops even more because I'm a long-term investor, right? If the market drops, I'll gladly pick up more shares to either lower my cost basis or to increase the size of my positions. I'm also having some cash ready on the sidelines, not just for huge dips in the stock market, but I'm keeping an eye out for the real estate market as well. Many people are expecting the real estate market to slow in the next few months. This is meant to be a short video, so I'm not going to go like super in-depth about each stock. The first stock I'm buying is Zillow. For those of you who don't know what Zillow is, it is a one-stop shop for real estate in the US. Um, when I look for real estate in the US, Zillow is the first I'll check followed by Redfin. And Zillow is a strong growth company and it's down 50% from its all-time high. If you look at the PE ratio, it does have a high, high valuation, right? It's probably one of the most overvalued company in the market. If you look at Amazon, they have a PE of 60 and it's a lot more profitable, which could be one of the main reasons why Zillow fell so much. So the current stock price already has future earnings priced into it, um, especially when the Coconana pandemic saw record breaking numbers in the real estate industry. Um, the housing market boomed in 2020 and then peaked this year in 2021, right? They're expected to grow 97.3% this year and only 51.9% next year, but they're also expected to have $1.17 EPS next year. And I do love Zillow's business model. It's TAM, total addressable market is huge and should work out to be about a 1.4 trillion addressable market per year. Now, Zillow is also branching into the uh, iBuying part of the business, which may make real estate agents redundant in the future. So it's definitely a disruptive business since they do everything related to real estate, including home loans, um, closing and escrow services, and the price right now is fascinating to say the least. If it drops to between 75 to 85 price range, I'll be interested in starting a position. So the second stock I'm buying is Planet 13. I've talked about this stock in a video before. So if you want to know more about Planet 13, watch that video instead. And the price for the stock is trading at about 440 to 480 recently. So it's really um, attractive to me right now. If it drops more, I'm just going to keep buying. Initially, when I started this position as a speculative stock, uh, when I was trying to find a stock in the uh, grass industry, and at that time it was trading at about two plus three dollars but as they started to produce more numbers and results i've upgraded them to a growth stock instead of a uh, speculative speculative stock during the coconana pandemic not many people were traveling to vegas and, and yet they still managed to increase revenue by 42 percent yeah so once international travel um, start to open and more people are comfortable to travel to vegas then their numbers are only going to become stronger so i'm comfortable picking up more shares even if the stock price keeps falling i bought another five figures worth of planet 13 here this past month and what's really exciting is um they recently opened their california superstore in santa ana which is just five minutes away from disneyland the company increased its net income tenfold to $3 million in the first quarter of 2021 compared with the prior year's quarter. It is also doing well in terms of capital management with negligible debt and over $140 million in cash on its balance sheet. Okay, look at this. They just purchased a medical grass treatment center license for $55 million to expand into Florida. And they are not only opening one, but three stores in Florida, Orlando, Miami, and Tampa. Florida is not yet fully legalized, so only medical grass is allowed at the moment. But in my opinion, it's only a matter of time before Florida makes recreational use legal and then Congress at the federal level. And Planet 13 also won the dispensary license for the Chicago region. So expect them to have a superstore in Chicago soon as well. If I had to choose between um, selling Planet 13 or buying more, 
I'm definitely choosing buying more, right? This is a long-term play for me. Even if it goes up to $8 in the next few months, I'm not gonna sell. Some exceptions withstanding, of course. And what's really exciting is Amazon might be pursuing um, legalization at the federal level. So that's going to be something to keep an eye out for. The third stock I'm buying is Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA. Now, Alibaba is another stock that has been affected by the Chinese crackdown and the Chinese government. China tech sector regulator ordered the country's internet giants to fix certain anti-competitive practices and data security threats. Alibaba lost half its value from its 52-week high. What happened with Chinese stocks has shown the power of the Chinese government. You know, they can decide the fate of any Chinese company with like a snap of their fingers. And, and this could go both ways, right? They can choose to help a company and send the stock price skyrocketing and, or, or cause the company to be somewhat worthless, kind of like uh, Gautu. And with Alibaba, they will find $2.8 billion for anti-competitive practices. Not to mention N Group's IPO was blocked by China last year. This is the main reason why I'm still hesitant to buy into BABA at the moment because of the Chinese intervention and drama that has been unfolding these past few months, right? Take a look at this article. Alibaba donates a third of its cash to Chinese initiatives. Donation my ass. <laughs> It's more like a bribe than anything, right? Pay the Chinese government and then we'll look the other way and let you run your business. About 10 years ago, when I was having a conversation with a wealthy Singaporean businessman who shall not be named, and he was doing business in China, um, you know, bribery was one of the ways to get your foot into the door, to build guanxi, which is also known as relationship, especially if you are a foreigner. So why would I be interested in buying Baba with all the drama going on? Simple. Like what our founding father Lee Kuan Yew predicted, China will be a formidable power in the next 30 to 50 years, and maybe India too. Which is why Singapore invests a lot in these two countries, right? The Chinese government aside, I love Alibaba's business model. I use Alibaba as one of my sources to determine price points and estimating costs. In 2020, the company did $1.2 trillion in gross marketplace volume, Throughout all of Alibaba's business, which includes marketplaces like Tmall and Taobao, wholesale, cloud computing, digital media, and venture investments. So if, if um, Alibaba gets below 150 at about like between $120 to $140, I'll be buying more. But um, as of right now, I'm watching how things unfold in China politically. There are definitely risks, but once the Chinese government is appeased and decide to let Alibaba do its own thing, I think the stock will bounce back fairly quickly. But word of caution, buy at your own risk because you don't know when China is going to be temperamental. Last stock that I'm potentially buying is Tencent. Tencent is another beaten down Chinese stock and almost all the uh, Chinese stocks were affected. China's National Press and Publication Administration said miners will only be allowed to play online games for up to three hours a week and only during specific times. Tencent has a huge gaming business and they've invested a lot of money into different gaming companies. Look at the amount of gaming companies they own or are a major stakeholder in. Riot Games, creator of League of Legends, LL, Epic Games, and right here, Singapore's very own C Limited. This might be more of a short-term impact to Tencent. Tencent said only a small amount of gaming revenue comes from younger players in China. In the second quarter, 2.6% of gross game receipts in China were derived from players under 16 years old. If you think about it, most gamers who are willing to spend money are mostly teenagers to young adults. According to research, um, the age group that is most likely to spend money in a game is between 18 years old and 24 years old. For Tencent, I like them because they have a variety of business ventures, um, extremely diversified business um, like Alibaba, and some people may not like it because of the uh, same reason, right? Look at the number of companies under Tencent. Tencent also invested about $220 billion into several non-Chinese companies like uh, Tesla, Spotify, Snapchat, Blizzard, and <laughs> of course, Singapore's very own C Limited. Tencent is a high growth company and it's at a discount right now near its 52 week lows um, at a PE ratio of about 19. It is the uncertainty about what the future holds for Chinese stocks which is why many investors 
including myself, are wary and some of them would rather sell out now than hold a stock. In my opinion, the Chinese government is kind of like your typical Singaporean tiger mom, thinking they know what is best for you and then making the decision for you without caring about your opinion, right? And for uh, Tencent, if the price drops between like 40 to $50, which is the price of my original cost basis, then I'll be interested in buying some. Like not a lot though, but definitely some. I do have positions in Planet 13, Baba, and Tencent, and I haven't had a position in Zillow, so that's like a new position if I buy into it, right? If you own any stocks that have fallen more than 50% from its 52 week high, it's time to review the numbers, and if you still have a high conviction for that company, then it's time to buy more. The last thing you want to do is to panic sell just because the market is. Right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to destroy the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell icon so you get notified whenever I post a new video. And do let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the China situation, are you buying any Chinese stocks, and what moves you're making in this market. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much for watching, really appreciate it, have an amazing day, and I'll see you again next time.